He still isn't turning. Maybe he doesn't know. He knows his opponent is mistaken if he thinks he doesn't. Rosh, he's going to throw. He can't risk it. He can. King Morhart was right. He knew he was right, and he knew when it happened that a better instant could not have been taken to let the axe take his arm down and his body into a swing. Turan swung his axe a hair over the dusty floor. Twisting once around, he finally looked at his opponent and released his axe into his opponent's stunned face. Screaming bloody beast! Morhart jumped up and started screaming to Rosh what a beautiful move they had just seen. Orthea found the whole thing a little too brutal, but she had to smile at her cousins. Orthea. Such a move almost never happens. It was simply perfect. I'm glad you like my lover. Your lover? Won't you share? I could. I don't think he would if he is no longer a castle grave. Most of the spectators were standing either asking for or explaining the last move. The next move would not be called until the crowd had time to enjoy the immediate, immediate memory of one very brilliant show of fighting skill. Turan pulled the axe out of his opponent's face. Turan took the body armor off the alloys and noticed his opponent was not yet dead. I'm sorry, my friend, and our next lies, I won't be told to kill you. He said something to him. He was asking forgiveness. Rosh and Morhart looked at Orthea. He didn't want to kill him. You are an angel, Orthea. Well, thank you, Rosh. Impossible not to adore you. How many... How many more must he fight? I'd guess most of them. He is the main attraction. But he must stay alive. If I knew you were waiting after the game, I'd stay alive. Orthea smiled and stood up and tried to will Turan to look at her. When he did, Orthea was not surprised. She showed him as best she could that she wanted him alive. Turan sent the protective cladding of the dead alloys and the Erskine, who would have to fight before him. At least two would have to fight before Turan could be called to fight. Good move. Very clever. Why shouldn't he wear the medal? He's fast. The beast skins are enough. He'll outmove his opponents. I'm starting to believe he will be at your party. I can see he's an angel, too. Rosh and Morhart looked at their Orthea. You'll see. He's a killer. No, Rosh, we are. Orthea, you are breaking my heart. I'm sorry, I don't like your game, Rosh. I don't get a good feeling watching it. I won't ask you again. Orthea kissed Rosh. Turan passed the chain up to his teammate and started practicing simple movements with his new sword. His face away He faced away from the fights and concentrated only on his sword, watching for rhythm and patterns. He's going to get tired. I don't think so, Rosh. He is playing. He is a very strange creature. Maybe not the kind of a creature one would want to have alone in bed. Forget it, King Rosh. There won't be anything to share. Orthea wanted the game to be over so she could take a long hot bath and relax until her party. I'm going to get something to eat. We've got draves here. I want to look at it first. Whatever you decide on, send some of the same. Orthea kissed both her cousins and went to another level to find a kitchen of her liking. She watched the draves be prepare her food. I'm sorry. The drave who had handed her her food did not know how to respond. Thank you, drave. Orthea was very confused. There were almost as many draves in the theater as royal family members. She walked back to her cousins. Why did draves agree to be our servants? That's the way it is. How many fights left? The way it looks, two. Your drave, one. He's playing with his axe again. It would be crazy not to throw it now that he has a sword. It won't be a surprise. Watch and see. When is the move? It's being called now. Turan waited. His opponent waited. Turan could feel his opponent waiting. He threw his axe up a few more times to get the feel of its mass. Just the axe, the head, the handle. He felt when he was ready. He felt the handle hit his hand and carry it toward the floor. When he twisted around to see his opponent, he saw it was too soon. 
His opponent had just started to move. Turan let his axe spin him around. He went down lower. He's off balance. No, it's another brilliant move. Everyone jumped to see Turan spin around to face his opponent. He was lying just above the floor when he let the axe go. Burning beast! Turan was picking himself up off the floor at the same time his axe handle bit into the dirt just under the shield of the alloys. The head slammed into his groin. Holy bleeding beast! He got him square in the groin! It missed this cup! He's bleeding brutal! Turan did not wait. He charged his opponent before the alloys could overcome his shock. He managed to swing his chain at Turan, but Turan jumped over it and took off his opponent's head in one swing. All right, my dear friends, I am going for a long bath. We shall come and escort you. Please do. Othea kissed them both and went off for a hot bath. After it had been prepared, she sent all the draves out. She had already decided not to do anything with her hair. She would wear no scents or colors, perhaps a translucent robe. With these thoughts, she slid under the water. She opened her eyes to look at a f the fuzzy things above the surface. <laughs>